people fighting for leavings at the garbage dumps of military camps. Prices will skyrocket, up 83% in Berlin, 112% in Vienna. It's seven ounces of bread a day, seven pounds of potatoes a week, meatless Tuesdays and Fridays, one egg per person per week, rationing strictly enforced. And Butterstand, to stand and wait for butter, becomes part of the German lexicon. The Germans, feeling the pinch, retaliate swiftly and predictably. The U-boats strike savagely at British shipping. When the Germans order unrestricted warfare, no more stop and search, neutrals, especially the United States, are outraged. It is a violation of the Hague Convention. The Germans insist neutral merchantmen will be spared. This ship is not neutral. She flies the British flag. Her fate will shock the world. Her name is Lusitania. The mighty Lusitania, pride of the Cunard White Star Line, is launched on June 7, 1907 at Clydebank, Scotland, built by John Brown and Company. She is 787 feet long, 88 feet of beam, better than 30,000 tons. Her cruising speed, 25 knots. She is Britain's answer to Germany's Deutschland, which holds the Atlantic speed record. Big Lucy easily takes the Blue Ribbon in 1907. Races from Queenstown, Ireland to New York in four and a half days in 1908. She is everywhere regarded as one of the marvels of the 20th century. A floating palace, a sea-going hotel. She borrows extravagantly from the style of the flamboyant resorts of the period. A plush, heavy, government-subsidized wonder. Full of inlaid mahogany, thick velvet drapes, elevators, cabin telephones, electric appliances, even a primitive kind of air conditioning, a first-class dining salon, all Louis XVI with nine painted muses smiling down from the balcony dome. A coal burner, capacity 7,000 tons, with 25 boilers and revolutionary new steam turbines. On the bridge, Captain William H. Turner, 59, commanding the fanciest, fastest, and safest ship in the world, the unsinkable Lusitania. It is May 1st. 1950, Saturday morning in New York, sailing day for the Lusitania. D.W. Griffiths, the birth of a nation, is packing them in on 42nd Street. Bloomingdale's is pushing pianolas. The stores are promoting Blue Surge Week for men and Prince of Wales walking sticks. Gennard has an ad this day, too. Lusitania, the fastest and largest steamer now in Atlantic service, sails at 10 a.m. Next to it, another ad, a warning. Vessels flying the flag of Great Britain are liable to destruction. Travelers do so at their own risk. Imperial German Embassy. Pier 54 at the foot of 11th Street in the heart of the meatpacking district, Lusitania's sailing is delayed until 12.30 p.m. There are 1,300 passengers, including 129 children plus 700 crew. First class passengers pay 137.50 and up one way. There are only 12 passenger cancellations. Of the German threat, Captain Turner, confident his ship can outrun any submarine afloat, says, the best joke I've heard in years.
In the listed cargo, the only possible contraband is 4,200 cases of small arms ammunition. There is a rumor that the ship carries six million dollars in gold bullion. The manifest does not show it. There is a rumor the ship is armed. The British deny it. So does New York's collector of the port who inspects the vessel before sailing. There are 159 Americans aboard. Their presence alone is regarded as a deterrent to any U-boat attack. Among them, Albert Hubbard, the eccentric sage of East Aurora, New York, and his wife, Alice. The celebrated producer, Charles Perlman, off to see his London production of Rosie Rapture. Sportsman Alfred Gwynne Vanderbilt, reportedly worth a hundred million dollars, on his way to his London stable. As the lines are cast off, Lusitania's band plays Tipperary, and the Royal Welsh male singers join in the Star Spangled Banner. leaves Ambrose Channel, the German submarine U-20, 35 men, three officers, is heading on a course of destiny. The hunting grounds off the old head of Kinsale in Queenstown. It is the first patrol for her commander, Captain Leutnant Walter Schwieger. He has sunk three ships in 48 hours. He has three torpedoes left. Across the broad Atlantic, two tracks, Lusitania and U-20, begin their deadly convergence. Captain Turner has been ordered to zigzag, does not, afraid it will frighten the passengers. He has been warned twice of U-boat activity, but reduces speed to 18 knots, so he will make port on the tide. At 2 p.m. May 7, 1915, Schwieger sees a black shape and submerges. The big brute of a ship is turning toward him, starboard side two. I cannot miss, he says, and fires. The torpedo smashes into a boiler room. In 18 minutes, unsinkable Lusitania sinks, 300 feet down to the sandy bottom, eight miles off the Irish coast. In art offices, there is the numbing wait as the names of survivors are slowly posted. 1,198 passengers and crew are dead. 63 are small children. 128 are Americans. Among them, Alfred Vanderbilt, who gave his life jacket to a woman, although he could not swim a stroke. Lost two, the Hubbards and Charles Proman. At Queenstown, as ship after ship brings in the more than 700 survivors, the American consul reports on the tragedy. Bruised and shuddering women, crippled and half-clothed men, and a few wide-eyed little children. Piles of corpses like cordwood on the shadowy old wharves. And in the windows of Queenstown shops, signs like this. Lusitania, missing baby, 15 months old. Very curly hair and rosy complexion. In white woolen jersey and white woolen leggings. Tries to talk and walk. Captain Turner is among the survivors. He thought he was the last to abandon ship, scrambled off the bridge and into the water as the bow plunged to the bottom. 